Mr. O'Connor. What is your real name? Malcolm. Malcolm X. Uh, is that your legal name? As far as I'm concerned, it's my legal name. Have you been to court to establish the I don't, I, yeah, I didn't have to go to court to be called Murphy or Jones or Smith. Excuse me for answering you this way. That's if right. a Chinese person were to say his name was Patrick Murphy, uh, you would look at him like he's insane because uh, Murphy is an Irish name, uh, a European name, or the name that uh, has a Caucasian or, or a white background. And a yellow person, Chinese is a yellow man, and uh, he has nothing to do or no connection whatsoever with the name Murphy. And if it doesn't look proper for a person who is yellow or Chinese to be walking around named Murphy or Jones or Johnson or Bunch or Powell, uh, I think it would be just as improper for a black person or the so-called Negro in this country, as we're taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to walk around with these names. And therefore, he teaches us that during slavery, the same slave master who owned us uh, put his last name on us to denote that we were his property. So that when you see a Negro today who's named Johnson, if you go back in his history, you'll find that he was once his grandfather or one of his forefathers was owned by a white man who was named Johnson. His name is Bunch. His, his grandfather was owned by a I white man point. that was uh, named Bunch. Would you mind telling me what your father's last name was? My father didn't know his last name. My father got his last name from his grandfather, and his grandfather got it from his grandfather, who got it from the slave master. The real names of our people were destroyed well, during was slavery. Any, was there any line, uh, any point in, in the uh, genealogy of your family when you did have to use the last name? And if so, what was it? The last name of my forefathers yeah. was taken from them when they were brought to America and made slaves. And then the name of the slave master was given, which we refuse. We reject that name today. You mean, you, mean to... you won't even tell me what your father's supposed last name was or gifted last name was? I never acknowledge it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you about the, the status of, of Elijah Muhammad. First of all, is he ill? I spoke to him today. He is in better health than he has been. He's suffering from asthmatic bronchitis. Is that why he didn't attend your rally on last Tuesday? Yeah, the only reason that he didn't attend was his uh, ill condition. And the weather here, especially on that particular day, was of such nature that it would have been almost insane for him to come. Well, now, did you hold that meeting last Tuesday because it coincided with the uh, general election, the primary election? I think if you study the history of Mr. Muhammad's work and religious work in this country, he's been, we've had our convention on February the 26th every year for, I think, the past 33 years. Well, now, while, while you don't uh, care to discuss your former name or the name that the slave master gave to your antecedents, uh, it is a matter of record that uh, Muhammad's last name was Poole, Elijah Poole. No, that's the name that his slave master gave to his uh, grandfather or great-grandfather, but that's not his name. Well, his mother and father thought when they called him Elijah Poole that that was his name. They huh? didn't know any better. Well, if they didn't know any better or not, that, they thought that was his name. Yes, sir, but, sir... So what I'm trying to find out is when did he cease to be Elijah Poole and get to be Elijah Muhammad? In 1931, I think it was, in Detroit, he was taught the true history of our people and made aware at that time that he was wearing an English name, and by not being an Englishman, he looked out of place. And uh, his teacher gave him the name that he's wearing today, Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad. All right, now when did he become what he purports to be in your literature, the son of Allah? I've never heard the Honorable Elijah Muhammad referred to as the son the of Allah. The prophet of Allah. Okay. I've never heard him referred to as the prophet of Allah. What do you refer to him as? Messenger of Allah. All right, the messenger of Allah, and I... Appreciate the correction. Yes, I mean, he says that a prophet is somebody who predicts the future, and he's not predicting the future, whereas a messenger is someone who carries a message that has been given to him by one who authors that message. Why, now, who gave him the message, and to whom is it supposed to be delivered? Master W.F. Muhammad, the one who taught him, is the author of the message. He gave it to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, which makes him the messenger. And he's to deliver that message of truth and righteousness to the 20 million American so-called Negroes, which means he's to teach us the truth which will awaken us and then show us how to live a life of righteousness which will automatically qualify us for recognition as human beings by all other righteous human beings here on this earth. Well, now, one other question. Uh, with reference to what Mr. Herbert asked you a little bit ago, uh, you took a very moderate position of... Uh, of wanting independence without having any hatred for the for the whites is that is, do I understand that correctly hatred is not involved in it whatsoever 
Well, I recall uh, in a recent plane crash, I mean two or three years ago, or less than that, a charter flight on Air France uh, in which a group of people from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, were, as they say, in the uh, business, uh, as they took off from, uh, from Arley Field. And you were quoted at that time as expressing great gratification that this tragedy had occurred. Do you recall that? I recall it. What did you uh, say? Was, Do you remember? Uh, the press misinterpreted it and misrepresented it. What did you say? They said that it was made at a Muslim meeting. It wasn't. It was made at a rally of Negroes, Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, and otherwise in Los Angeles, who were rallying to protest the brutal shooting of uh, seven unarmed Negroes and what did you by say? heavily armed white policemen in the city of Los Angeles. And because we are a people who have been taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to never carry weapons of any kind, but to get on God's side and rely on God to fight our battles for us. Uh, at the time that these brothers were shot down so brutally, I pointed out at the <laughs> funeral of the brother who died that God would step in and take a hand in giving us some form of justice for the brutal killing of our brother. And when the plane crashed in France, uh, I pointed out to the crowd at this rally that this was an act of God showing his wrath or complete uh, resentment over the brutal uh, form of injustice that had been inflicted upon our poor unarmed brothers. Were you saying Sir, that, or do Billy you believe Graham, that? At that time, Dr. Billy Graham was in a crusade in Chicago, and the press, your papers here in this city, uh, quoted Billy Graham of also saying that that pl uh, plane crash was an act of God. And if you take time to check the newspapers, I think that you'll find that this is correct. But no one thought that Billy Graham was so wrong when he attributed the crash of this plane to his God. But when we say that it come from our God, then we're looked upon as being, well, you know, that, outrageous. I know, but you took the position that uh, this was a matter of satisfaction to you for an injustice that, done against you, and I think that that's a trifle severe. We did not think that it was a coincidence that 120 of, of the whites on this plane came from the state of Georgia, a state that has the worst record in history in the history of America for the mistreatment of black people uh, in this country. Worse than Mississippi? Uh, well, uh, they maybe are a little less... Uh, Mississippi is a little less hypocritical today than Georgia, but both of them are still practicing the same thing. Uh, now the, the whites in Georgia bite Negroes with a smile, whereas they used to bite them with a growl. But they're still being bitten, and we don't think that it, that it is any worse to be bitten with a smile than it is to be bitten with a growl. Mr. Calvert. While we're on the subject of uh, Mississippi, what is uh, your organization's position of what happened in Mississippi uh, in the past Such six as months? what? Such as the uh, James Meredith incident and the enrollment of him in the university. Well, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wants justice for <clears throat> every one of the 20 million so-called Negroes. And to just take one Negro and stick him in, in college uh, with, uh, with the aid of the six, I think it's six, uh, 15,000 troops and at a cost of $6,000, is a disgrace. It's a waste of taxpayers' money. It's a farce. It's hypocrisy. Because if it's right for uh, one Negro to be forced into that university, then every Negro in the state of Mississippi who is qualified has the same right to go to that university. And if the government is not uh, ready and willing to uh, enforce the right of every Negro in the state of Mississippi, then, uh, in my opinion, sir, it's only hypocrisy to pretend that uh, they are for justice uh, by pushing one Negro in and blowing it up all over the world to make it look like they're solving the problem when millions of black people in that state are still going to uh, segregated schools and getting an inferior education. Does your organization encourage members to uh, uh, attempt to enter schools that have been known as all white? Uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad doesn't discourage us from attending white schools, but he does say that uh, it is better for us to go to our own schools and after we have a thorough knowledge of ourselves, of our own kind, and uh, racial dignity has been uh, instilled within us, then we can go to anyone's school and we'll still retain our race pride, our racial dignity, and we will be able to avoid the subservient inferiority complex that most Negroes have or are, that is instilled within most Negroes who receive this sort of integrated education.